discuss this in a bit more detail with Martha Rayner in New York, who's a professor of law who's represented a number of Guantanamo detainees, while Charles Stimson acted as an advisor to various Secretaries of Defence up until 2007, coordinating the Pentagon's detention policy and operations, including at Guantanamo Bay. He is in Washington, and we'll come to him in a couple of minutes. But uh, Martha Rayner, to you, first of all, thanks for being with us. Your reaction to this latest transfer news? Well, I mean, it's certainly good news for the men who have, many of whom of the 15 were cleared for many years um, by the Obama administration and have now finally, after languishing for many years at Guantano, Guantanamo, been transferred to a Gulf state. It's also wonderful because the United Arab Emirates is showing support for the United States policy, um, is, is, is trying to help the U.S. solve what is a very difficult problem by taking in these men and helping them to reintegrate into society. And for those that are left, I mean, is it realistic to think even at this late day that Obama could close Guantanamo or transfer the remainder of prisoners into detention in the U.S.? The chance that Guantanamo is going to be quote unquote closed before Obama leaves power is very, very remote. However, it's very realistic that many more men could be transferred uh, from Guantanamo before Obama leaves, leaves power. Right now there's over 20 men who are approved to leave and um, slowly but surely Obama's administration is approving more men to leave Guantanamo. The challenge now is finding countries that will take these men and the Gulf States, the United Arab Emirates, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Oman, um, these are all countries in which uh, uh, repatriation, uh, not repatriation, but reintegration is very possible. Um, and so the Obama administration, if it keeps working with these allies to accept these men, there's a possibility many, many men could be released from Guantanamo before the end of his presidency. And briefly, what should be done with the 9-11-5, including Khalid Sheikh Mohammed? I mean, what should be done with, with those people? Look, this is a very difficult problem. And Obama made a mistake many years ago. He initially decided to try these men in our civilian federal system here in New York City. Um, that decision was changed as a result of political pressure and Obama decided to go the military commission system and hold the proceedings in Guantanamo. That has proved to be untenable. Those proceedings have been going on for years and years and these men have yet to come to trial. Um, the, the Obama administration is probably not going to do anything about that in the months that has remaining, but the next president would do well to move these men to the United States and to prosecute them in our civilian federal criminal justice system. Now, the Republican Senator uh, Ayotte uh, published a report recently of 107 current and former detainees and their terrorist pasts. And we do know that 21% of the inmates freed by George Bush re-engaged in military activity, about 5% of those that Obama has released. I, I mean, uh, what is your assessment of simply the charge that you release these people and a good number of them go on to pose another threat to the United States. What you have to remember is this detention by its very nation, na nature is temporary. This is detention pr supposedly pursuant to the law of war. Our Supreme Court has deemed it to be lawful at least back in 2004 when it deemed lawful, but even then our Supreme Court recognized that over time these detentions might prove to be not lawful, right, because they're by their very nature they're supposed to be temporary. Now we're 14 years into these detentions. The, the Commander-in-Chief of the United States has to release a certain okay. number of these men because they can't maintain uh, this situation forever. Just a final thought on the comments from Donald Trump about filling Guantanamo with bad dudes. That uh, is how he described them and bring back a hell of a lot worse than waterboarding. Do you think uh, either of those things are possibilities if Trump wins the White House? Torture is unlawful. It is a crime. It is a domestic crime here in our country and it's an international crime. Um, whether or not uh, Trump could fill Guantanamo, it, the law would not necessarily permit that. Um, so I think once again Donald Trump needs to look very carefully at both domestic and international law before making such pronouncements.
Okay, Martha Rayner, thank you so much for joining us there from New York. Let's cross straight to Washington and talk to uh, Charles Stimson, uh, who used to advise Donald Rumsfeld and also Robert Gates. Uh, welcome here to the program. Let me start in the same place I started with Martha. Just a quick response on today's news of these 15 transfers. Well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, this uh, batch of transfers, as you stated earlier, is the largest transfer during the Obama administration. It's a long time in coming. I share in Ms. Rayner's frustration when you clear somebody for transfer uh, years ago, you should try to get them off the island into a country that's willing to accept them uh, forthwith, and that hasn't been the case. Uh, the Gulf state countries, as, as she mentioned, uh, and many other countries uh, in the, you know, since 2002 have been very, very helpful in uh, accepting transferees or releasees uh, over the years. And so my guess is that between now and the end of the Obama administration, they'll uh, transfer a dozen or more detainees, but we probably won't see the actual closure of the facility by the end of the Obama administration. What about the policy as a whole? I mentioned uh, your advice to Donald Rumsfeld, your, your involvement to historically in all of this. When Guantanamo was set up, uh, did you think you'd be sitting there in 2016 with a number of people sitting there in Guantanamo who've had no trial and no prospect of trial? Well, the canard that they need a trial is just misplaced because they're law of war detainees, and under the law of war, you hold detainees for the duration of the hostilities. That said, to answer your question, no, I did not think in August of 2016 that there'd be any detainees that left at Guantanamo because I took the, this president at his word that he would spend the political capital necessary uh, during 2009 and at the latest in 2010 to close the facility uh, once and for all. Remember, President Bush said in 2006 he'd like to see the day when Gitmo was closed. And so there were plans in place to close Guantanamo, but this president simply didn't use the window of opportunity he had in this first two years in office when the Democrats controlled the House and the sure. Senate to force it to, to, uh, to well, He would argue that, of course, he, he was blocked. But I don't want to get involved in that. I mean, was the setting up, when you look back at Guantanamo Bay, uh, was that a mistake? Uh, is President Obama right? It's emboldened violent extremists. It has simply weakened America's relationships with key allies. It certainly has put a strain on those uh, relationships with key allies. I think less so over the years. They've sort of factored the fact in that Gitmo is still open and that this administration is doing what they can to reduce the numbers. Uh, it has been a recruiting tool for detainees over the years, although a study by the Brookings Institution scholars say that in the jihadi literature, as of late, it's not as much of a recruiting tool. I was asking Martha, and you will have heard it, uh, the various comments from, from Donald Trump, uh, the possibility of perhaps a new chapter involving IS from Iraq or, or Syria inside of Guantanamo, and you uh, will have heard those comments about waterboarding. I mean, what do you think when, when you hear remarks like that? Well, they're completely out of bounds. I mean, waterboarding is unlawful. It's against the law. Uh, I doubt many people, uh, even in the chain of command, on the military chain of command, would follow the order if given. Uh, torture is against our principles and against the law, so people aren't going to do it. As for whether or not uh, a President Trump would be able to fill Guantanamo up, he should be cautious about that, because if he tries to bring ISIS members to Guantanamo, uh, remember that those detainees, once they're at Gitmo, have access to federal district court through the habeas process. And I'm not sure a federal district court would uphold the detention of ISIS members because they're not that well connected legally uh, to the narrow class of people who were subject to detention under uh, the 2001 authorization for use of military force. So they may end up there and then get bounced out by, by a judge pretty quickly. Well, Charles Stimson, we have to leave it there, but thank you so much for your time. And Martha Rayner, I know you uh, sat there listening to what Charles had to say. Thanks for you two joining us on today's Global. Thanks to you both.